Here's how to hack into your ECU so you can program new keys. Now you might need to do this if you've lost all of your master keys or if you're swapping ECUs. In either case, you will need a new key program to your ECU. Now of course, the expensive way to do this is to take this to the dealership and have them replace the ECU. What we're gonna do is hack into the ECU and clear the codes to put it in auto programming mode so it accepts new keys. Now to demonstrate this, I'm gonna be swapping in a new ECU in my car so that my keys are no longer recognized. Now something tells me you should always disconnect your battery before playing with the ECU. Now in most cars, the ECU is located behind the glove box here. This here is the ECU. It's got five electrical connectors on it that we need to remove in order to get it out. I'm just going to start by squishing on the tab and removing these electrical connectors. Now if I have an unprogrammed brand new key or I've got an ECU that's swapped, if I put the key into the ignition, you'll see the security light doesn't go out because it doesn't match the ECU. Of course, if I try to start the car, it'll just crank, but it won't start. So here's a quick overview on how the immobilizer system works in your car. When you put your key into the ignition ring, a little coil here picks up the RFID signal and transmits it to the transponder key amplifier. The amplifier then decodes it and sends a signal to the ECU. Inside this ECU here is this EEPROM chip that stores the key values. The ECU will compare the stored values to the current key and will allow you to start the car. So here's the setup. We've got a chip key here and we've got the ignition ring. It's got a coil in it that sends a signal to the transponder key amplifier which then sends a signal to the ECU via these wires. Here's what the circuit board looks like inside of the transponder amplifier. If you take a one of your keys you will find a little black chip here that's your RFID chip for this key. Now in a lot of the newer vehicles the amplifier sends a signal first to the transponder ECU which stores the keys and then to the ECU. The reason they've done this is because the ECU is very expensive to replace in case you lost your keys so they brought up this cheaper ECU. Both setups are pretty similar in procedure the only difference is the transponder ECU has to go through a handshaking process with the ECU in order to program new keys. Alright here I've got the ECU removed from the car, it's out of a V6 Solara. I'm going to go ahead and open it up by start removing the screws. Okay we're going to remove the circuit board from the housing and we'll be looking for an 8 pin chip which is IC900 and it's located right here. Alright to hook up the computer to the chip we're going to solder some wires to the leads on the chip. I'm just dapping some solder on the chip. I'm just soldering a wire onto the IC900 chip. Alright, we got all six wires soldered to the chip. Now you could get one of these chip clips to clip it onto the chip for easier programming, but in my case I couldn't get a good contact on it so I chose to solder wires to it instead. This here's the circuit I'm using to program my EEPROM chip. I'm plugging it directly into the serial port on my computer and then going through some 4.7k ohm resistors and 5 volt Zener diodes before going directly to the chip. Here I've got 5 volts from the power supply and then the ground. So here's my EEPROM reader on a breadboard. I've got it connected to my state-of-the-art Pentium 4 computer via the serial port and then I've got the other end of it connected via this hookup wire to the EEPROM chip on the ECU. I'm using Polyprog which is a serial device programming software. I'm going to first go to setup and make sure I'm set up to read from the serial port SI, PROG, IO and COM1. Then I can probe it and check that it reads okay. And then I'm going to head over to the device menu and select the microwire EEPROM 9356 which is the chip I have on my ECU. Then I'm going to click read on the left to read all the contents from the chip. Now if you take a closer look at the original EEPROM dump, through trial and error I was able to figure out that there is three keys stored in this dump. Each key is a unique eight digit hex value and is repeated three times in the EEPROM dump. So in total we have about 2.5 million combinations of keys that we can have. So here you can clearly see for the first master key E908A003 it's repeated three times here, here, and here. And for the second master key 4088 9B04, it's repeated three times here, and for the valet key CA7FEA09, it's repeated three times here. Now over here on the right side, we've got this value here, which is your key counter. The key counter basically tells you in hex how many keys are programmed to the vehicle. Over here, we've also got these 10 values, which are your virginized keys that tell the computer to go into auto programming mode. And over here in the middle, we've got FBDF and 5A69, which should be left there. It's a valet lockout mode which only allows you to program one valet key if you erase them. So after zeroing everything except for FBDF and 5A69, this is what the virgin dump looks like. There were some values in the middle here that are unnecessary and can also be zeroed. To virginize this chip we need to zero all of the key values on this side as well as on this side. To do that I'm going to head over to the edit menu and click edit buffer enable and that will allow me to manually enter a value for each key. I'm going to go ahead and zero all of these keys here. So here I've got everything zeroed except for FBDF and 5A69. I'm going to go ahead and write that to the chip. With the programming complete, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the ECU back into the case. 
and we're gonna go and try this into the car. So here I've got the new virginized ECU, I'm just plugging it in under the dash. Alright, I've got my old cluster swapped in so I can read the security light to program the keys. Okay, so for programming, we're gonna be paying attention to the security light. I'm gonna first start by taking my key, inserting it into the ignition and removing it. And then the light will go solid, indicating it's in auto programming mode. Then I'm gonna insert the key, the light will blink, and we're gonna wait five seconds for it to program. Then I'm going to remove the first key and insert the second key. The light will then blink and we're going to wait five seconds for it to program. Then we're going to remove the second key and insert the third key. The light again then blinks and goes out indicating that the programming mode has been cancelled. When I pull out the key, the security light blinks normally as if there's no key in the ignition. Now if I want to check my key, if I insert the valet key into the ignition, you'll see that the light stays on for two seconds and then goes out. That's how I know that's a valet key. However, if I insert a master key into the ignition, the light goes out right away. And of course, this will start the car. And that's all it takes to hack into your immobilizer if you've lost your keys or you've swapped ECUs.